All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's broadcast of the Love of Music Talk Show. My name is Myron Benjamin Blakey Fisher. My co-host, Annie May, the Neil So Songstress, is a little under the weather, so she's just handling the technical issues tonight. So um, we have our special guest, Rankin 13. Say hey, everybody. Good, good. So first, let's uh, introduce yourself individually. Okay, so let's start right here. So, ready first? Yeah. I'm Mike. I play drums for Rankin's 13. I'm Eli. I play bass. I'm Megan Ray. I play violin. Hi, I'm Tom. I play lead. I'm Brandon. I play keys. And then I play acoustic and I sing. My name is Justin. Thank you. All right. That's all right. So, all right. So, where are you from? We are all, well, generally from central Ohio, uh, Columbus, Ohio. That's where we started everything at, uh, right here in my garage on the house uh, we're doing this little interview at. Okay. Now, um, the name Rankin 13, uh, when I saw the name, I first saw of a city out here uh, uh, in the Pittsburgh area called Rankin. I said, I wonder if they're from there. So how did you get the name Rankin 13? Uh, Rankin's 13, uh, I actually took a trip with my family down to Ripley, Ohio, on the southern border, and uh, we got a little history lesson on Minister John Rankin, um, and he had 13 children. He was actually running the first stop on the Underground Railroad right across the border of Kentucky into Ohio, and uh, he raised 13 children while he helped over 2,000 people escape slavery, uh, working close with John Parker to make all that happen. And uh, he's a folk hero to us, so we decided to name our band after him and his honor. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Now, um, how long have you been a band? Uh, somebody else want to answer that? Strong, we started on two years. <laughs> we up on two we years. started yeah. about two years ago. Uh, Justin started off. He uh, we had reconnected about two and a half years ago after growing up together and like being in high school together. And he had a little catalog of songs to play in my garage. And he, I'm not a country, I wasn't a country person when he came into my garage to play these for me. And he started playing. I'm like, dude, people need to hear this. Like one of our songs, Rattlesnake, is a beautiful story. Uh, I didn't even know he had that power inside of him to write a story and tell a story like that through music. I'm like, other people need to hear this. And the only thing stopping him was himself. So when we started talking and doing open mics, he got himself out there and the ball started rolling and we all started falling into place. Yeah. So, all right. Now, do you uh, primarily perform in the Ohio area? Do you branch out? Um, we are trying to branch out as much as we can. We're actually coming back to Pittsburgh. Um, here, what is it, on the 27th, 28th? 28th. The 28th at a Voodoo Brewing Homestead. We're going to be playing a show there. On the 28th, uh, that'll be our second time there. The first time was a pretty good success, and they called us to come on back. Well, that's all right. Another uh, place later this summer, we're down in West Virginia, Char uh, Charleston, Charleston, yeah. Charleston, Charleston yeah. West Virginia, the Blue Parrots, and then all corners of Ohio. Yeah, we go everywhere in Ohio, try to play as much as we can. Mm, I'm gonna have to check my schedule, see. Uh, if we're busy on the 28th, maybe we can come through the video and check you out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, now, what uh, what genre do you play? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. The alternative? <laughs> punk country? The, the blanket statement is country music, but it's really hard to fit into a category with that alone. I mean, we all had different musical backgrounds coming into this. So his country kind of evolved into a different sound, which, yeah, we started calling it Y'alternative. The alternative. Huh? Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Now, um, what is your uh, bis biggest musical influence? Somebody want to start? Yeah. Get us all a little individual right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me on drums, I mean, growing up, my uh, background was really following people like Travis Barker with Blink Bay 2 or Cyrus Baluki with New Sound Glory, but any more with more in the countryside. 
um, people like Rich Redmond and Jason Aldean and stuff like that. So it's kind of spread over a lot of different genres. Uh, I was a pop punk emo kid through high school. So uh, Blink-182, Taking Back Sunday, Yellow Card were a lot of huge influences of mine. Um, coming over to the countryside, uh, like Troubadours, Triple by Turtles. Um, I I like any music that's good. I'll listen to any genre. I actually came in claiming I hated country music, and now my uh, <laughs> <laughs> my wife makes fun of me because it comes on in my playlist in the car all the time. Okay, all right. Um, I would love to thank some of my teachers. <laughs> my, I would say a lot of my stuff came from the music educators that really pushed me to try new things and then just enjoy what I do. Um, so there's Paul and Donna Fox with the South Hills Junior Orchestra. So if you're an aspiring string player and you want to be in a youth orchestra, it's in the South Hills. It's the Upper St. Clair High School is where they practice. I highly recommend them. I also, uh, my college professor, Dr. Melinda Crawford Batu has um, really gave me all the knowledge um to even show up to a country band because i have a classical background <laughs> <laughs> and be able to are you from the pittsburgh area? say that again so I you are from, from the pittsburgh area. yeah i grew okay. up in the south of pittsburgh um so bethel park and i drove to upper st Clair to to do this youth orchestra um and it really is where my music love started um just testing out all these big major orchestral work um, at a more accessible level really gave me the passion to make it my entire career. Um, and then my college professor gave me all the knowledge to turn it into what something I could make my own. And then I've also been working with the Columbus Cultural Orchestra these last uh, two years. So Stephen Spotswood also is, is a huge inspiration to me to even apply the knowledge that I had to, to what other people were doing. So. That's, I really feel oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, mate. <laughs> um, for me, growing up, sorry? Say again. I just said I was Growing up, I listened to a lot of James Taylor on acoustic, so listening to the finger style was very uh, interesting and important to me. Um, towards high school, I started liking John Mayer and uh, Jimi Hendrix a lot. Uh, nowadays, I'm really enjoying singer-songwriter types like uh, Jason Isbell and Tyler Childers. Okay. Uh, and you? Uh, I'm kind of Eli's boat. I grew up uh, in the little emo crybaby scene. I like hearing my whiny music growing up, but it all started with an acoustic guitar uh, going to call it when i went to college for music it helped with my music theory i fell in love with theory learning what you can do with the piano how to transpose anything making whatever noise i want through 88 keys um, but big musical influences are always going to go back to take them back sunday um like fallout boy that's just that's <laughs> something that gets me going uh mayday parade me and justin vibe over some mayday parade a lot yeah we went to a show that was awesome yep. yeah we almost cried <laughs> <laughs> no, <I didn't. laughs> all right and you and me um most of my uh, my music taste is all over the place. I, I listen to like old school hip hop to like modern like country music and uh, metal and all kinds of stuff. But I guess as far as my music and my songwriting goes, I guess uh, I'd like to say Cody Jenks and Brandon Jenkins and Turnpike Troubadours uh, are kind of my top three as far as songwriting and how I play my music uh, when I you know started doing this kind of thing. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> right. Speaking of songwriting, what is your uh, what is your band's pro uh, songwriting process? We wait for Justin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a it's a mess. Justin writes something, and then we completely bastardize it into whatever uh, genre we're feeling yeah. at the time. Yeah. I uh, I, I I just kind of. During like a manic episode, I'll write a bunch of lyrics down, like kind of tell a story about just some stuff I'm going through, and I'll put some chords to it, and uh, 
I don't think what I do is very special. It's really what the whole band puts together behind me is what actually makes the song what it is. Uh, my songs don't sound anything uh, like originally, like I have some stuff on YouTube. They don't sound anything like what they do now because these guys helped me write some just badass tunes. So it's really all that. Okay. Um, and how can uh, listeners support you? Well, come out to a show. <laughs> buy, some, buy some merch. Come out to a show. Buy some merch. Not even our show. Go out to local shows. Yeah, mm -hmm. go out to local shows. That's really what it's about is trying to get a community together of like original or even cover artists and just getting a bunch of folks together that just have a passion for playing music on stage and just doing shit. Uh, that's that's really what we want. But if you want to support us directly, uh, you can find us, Rankings 13, uh, on Facebook. Uh, you can find, we have an album out we released in January. That's on Spotify uh, and iTunes. And that's, uh, it's uh, it's self-titled, Rankings 13, R-A-N-K-I-N-S, and then the number 13 after. Um, and, uh, I imagine most of the folks listening to you are probably from uh, the Pittsburgh area. Like I said, on the 28th, we're going to be playing at Voodoo Live Homestead. So if you really want to support us, come out and give us a shot, see what all the fuss is about, listen to us, and buy some merch and just hang out with us. We uh, Buy us a beer. Yeah, buy us a beer. That's really it. Where do you see yourselves as a band next year? Else want to answer that one. Bigger venues. Yeah, I mean, we got to play this year was our first year we got to play one of the festivals here in Columbus. That's a nice little taste to get put in our mouth, and we're ready to do that more often. Um, yeah, bigger venues. We know Columbus really isn't our scene to play this, but everywhere else we play, it seems like we fit in pretty well. So travel a lot more. Travel trying to get out, yeah. going to the places that need to hear us, finding our right market, finding our fan base. Yeah. Basically touring is where I want to see this band next year. Not like across the country, but maybe just hit all the states, you know, around Ohio and everything. Just just touring. Just put okay. on like a week -long little tour. Sounds good. Sounds good. And um, now, pick a song to recommend for everyone to listen to. I'll let y'all answer that one. <laughs> Brain so falls or pitch. Brain so falls or wavered, maybe? Yeah. Oh, one of our songs? One of yeah. our yeah. songs, yeah. yeah. I think Wayward Brother is, uh, that doesn't have the whole band behind it. Wayward Brother is like a little acoustic song that really uh, talks about just hanging out with your buddies when you're going through a hard time. But if you want the whole band behind something, I Rattlesnake. think uh, Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake is the one that sold me. The second he played that in my garage, I knew that was a real, that's a real song. It's a real story. It's a very good story. It's a domestic abuse kind of story with a very kick-ass ending to it <laughs> for sure mm, okay and so why do you perform uh, i guess i just wasn't happy um uh, just sitting here in my living room playing songs for my dogs and my kids uh <laughs> Uh, my wife actually uh, kept nudging me to go perform for people, and then Brandon came along, and he was that second opinion I needed to really go out and start playing. And once I got on stage, and I felt like I really connected with somebody with some of my stories that I tell when, when I'm on there, uh, it's, it's really about just uh, sharing emotions with people and connecting uh, with some hard times, really, is, is what it's about for me. Okay. Uh, what advice would you give to young up and coming artists? I ain't the one to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else. That's a main question. All here. <laughs> 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 other, other than get out there and play. Yeah, like, get yeah. out there and play. Stick with it. Just believe in yourself. You know, all those things that sound so easy to do, but they're not. Um, it. I don't know, whatever it means to you is good enough, so do it, um, enjoy it, and still listen to others, you know, if someone says, hey, you're out of tune, be like, okay, and go back and figure out where you're out of tune. They didn't mean the whole song, it's probably <laughs> two notes, so find those two notes, you know, practice, also practice how you perform, or you'll perform how you practice. 
Yeah, all my students you know this. <laughs> there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, hey, now I'm to that, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess the best advice I could ever give, and I give this to everybody, because I started just playing acoustic guitar by myself. Um, get around other musicians, like just period. Just uplift other musicians too. Yeah. Don't put down other musicians. Yeah. Get around other. I think musicians. we're in a culture now that we're starting like that's how it is. We know to uplift each other. If you find a band out there that's talking down on you or talking crap about another band, then that's their problem. They've got their own issues to work out. But real musicians help other musicians. And they uplift other musicians. There you go. Yes, that's the way I've always known it to be. Um, yeah. Now, uh, what are some of your uh, gig goals? Oh boy, South by Southwest. South by Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's mine. That's my big one. I said I could retire happily the second we get down there. South by Southwest yeah. tour is. In here, where we're starting, and uh, the finish line is Austin, Texas, to be able to play and busk on the street there, and you set up every venue you can on the way down to that, <laughs> and then it's a race to get back home. But getting a South by Southwest tour, what as a band? Hell uh, yeah! Why Austin, Texas? Uh, well. Austin, Texas. I uh, I spent some time in Texas, and uh, I walked the strip on Sixth Street and Fourth Street. <laughs> and uh, no, live live music is uh, booming down there in Austin, Texas. Um, every single corner, every single bar, somebody's out there busking, or somebody's in that window just playing their ass off for you. And it's all great music. It's all underrated. It's all underground, and and they're just waiting to get picked up by the next, I guess, label or next musician coming through that just wants a band to open up for them. Austin is the place to go, uh, as far as I've seen. That that's that's the end goal for me here within the next couple of years is make it to Austin and just put on a hell of a show for some folks. That's what I want to do. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Okay, so um. Is there anything that you want our fans to know about you that we haven't discussed? I think it's cool to say you can't tell by looking and feel like we look majorly young, but uh, most of us all have kids and families. So, I mean, we're trying to do this stuff. I mean, I have a daughter. He's got a son and a daughter. He's got two. Tom here has two. I mean, we're trying to do all this and balance of family and work, too. So, I mean, if someone has an excuse why they can't get started. Yeah, I mean, right. we're doing it. Every single one of us have a family, a full-time job, all that. Yeah. Megan's yeah. I'm a business life. owner. Yeah, she's got 10 yeah. different jobs. she got 10 jobs. She She's still doing it. She shows up every show, and she just knocks it out of the park. So, I mean, if you want to do, if you want to do it, you can do it. You just go out there and fucking do it, man. Sound like she's the butcher, the baker, and the shoeshine boy for yeah. Jeff Rangel. <laughs> I'm a marketer. All right. Stage man. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Well, lady and gentlemen, it is such a pleasure to meet you. Um, we're gonna have. Uh, um, we're gonna have this run, um, of course, live here, and also um, on um, for the Love of Music talk show. It'll air on at five o'clock on Scarfire Radio on Tuesday evening, right? So it repeats also uh, on Spotify, and it's also going to be on YouTube. So again, it was a pleasure talking to you all. I thank you very much. Huh? You want to end it with a toast? Hey, do we want a toast? Hey, if you got a drink? Hey, this is what we do at our show. Hey, I, wish you much, <laughs> I wish you much. I wish you much. And I hope to Thank see you around. You below you always drop beside you, bud. Hey, we'll see you when we get to Pittsburgh. All right. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Thank you. You all have a great evening now. You too. Thank you. You're welcome.